before we start in on our last module, I'd like to um, go through this exercise that was left up. So for those of you who uh, may have worked through this on the break, I'd like to go through this very quickly. Again, these slides are, um, they are now available um, in the shared Google Drive. Um, so we have a running collection of all of the slides that um, will be uh, delivered in the various modules this week. And that includes um, our day zero today. So uh, everything is now uploaded um, as it has been discussed in our time together today, um, including this slide here. So anything that we may have skipped over um, or blasted through, um, maybe the caffeine got me going a little fast and it happens. Um, and so those slides are um, available um, for your reference. Um, and uh, the link has been passed around in the chat a few times. I'm going to lean on some of my supporting crew um, to grab that link um, while I start in on this exercise. And that exercise uh, uses just about uh, everything we discussed in module three. Um, not including the actual modules, but rather focusing on uh, dictionaries and functions. So we'd like to say write a function um, that will take as argument a string and will return a dictionary that reports the number of occurrences of every character in the string that was passed as argument. So let's do that real quick. So I'm just gonna clear my scratch script here and I'm gonna start a new function with the keyword def and I'm gonna name my function count underscore car. And it's gonna take one argument. I'm just gonna name that argument S, S for string. And I'm going to conclude the heading, write a small little doc string, and all it says is this function counts characters. That's the end of my doc string. And then I'm going to start on the body, and the body is going to return a dictionary. So let's go ahead and declare an empty dictionary, and well, let's name it result. So we'll say result equals and empty curly brackets. Result is the dictionary that we're going to populate with the number of occurrences of every character in the string that's passed to our function. And now we can first do this by, I'm gonna make some comments here because we're gonna divide this up into two subtasks. Again, you can put a comment into your code using the pound, just shift three. The first thing we're gonna do is get the unique characters in the string that was passed to our function. So that's task number one, get unique characters. And we can return twice. And let's go ahead and put in a second comment. Shift three, second comment, count, just say count characters. So those are our two tasks. Now for our first task, for getting the unique characters in our string, let's just start a new variable. Uh, let's declare an empty list. We'll call that list, say name it, unique cars. And empty list is equal to an empty square bracket set. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna iterate over every element of our string sequence for, let's say, SS in S. So for every element SS in our sequence S, we're just gonna say, if the element is not in our unique cars list, then end it. So for every character in the past string S, if that character is not in our list called unique cars, then append that character to our list of unique 
cars. And that's our first task accomplished. Secondly, now we're just gonna go through and we're going to count the number of occurrences of every element in unique cars, number of occurrences in the original string that was passed. And we can do this as follows. Now let's iterate through every character in unique cars. We can use the same name for our iterator for SS in unique cars. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll declare a key of that unique character, SS. We'll declare that as a key in our, excuse me, our result dictionary. Result will be the dictionary that we return. We'll say result with the key of SS equal to an element in our unique cars. And let's just initialize that is equal to zero. And then we'll do a loop over the string that was passed and count the number of times that every that an element in S is equal to SS in unique cars. And that looks like this. Let's say for X in our original past argument, for X in S, if X is equal to SS, X is an element in the original argument. SS is the unique character in our list of unique characters. And if X is equal to SS, then result of SS, the value that goes with the key that is our unique car character, I'm just gonna increase it by a value of one. Again, there are a number of ways to do this. This is one that exercises lots of what we've learned today. Probably if you're feeling creative and confident, you could potentially generate a solution here that's about four lines long, and that's totally fine. We're gonna do this explicitly to sort of work our chops on what we've learned. And so now in this case, we've looped over every unique character that was found, initialized a summation that corresponds to each of those unique characters and then counted the number of times we find in our original past argument S, how many times that's equal to the unique character that we're considering. And lastly, return it, return result. So that's what it looks like. Give it another 30 seconds or so. I see uh, we got one response of someone needing help. Um, feel free to raise a hand um, or um, reach out and we can connect. Um, if not in here, um, maybe we can uh, move that support over to a breakout room. In the meantime, we can test this. So pick your favorite string or generate some nonsense in one. Doesn't matter. I'm going to print the return value of my new function, and I'm just going to do a, 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 B, 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 C, C, D. And remember, two lines of indentation equal to the indentation at which the function was defined in the first place. That lets Python know that the body of the function being defined is done. And I'm just going to test this out, see if it works. And there you go. So we'll find that the return dictionary will specify every character found in the past string 
as a key, A, B, C, D. And then the corresponding value that goes with each of those keys is equal to the number of occurrences of that key or of that character in the string that was passed. Four A's, three B's, two C's, and one D in my test case. Of course, you can find a multi-line string of some Shakespeare, then you could run the exact same thing and um, do the same sort of analysis on some sort of a real world problem, not just some gibberish in a string. All the same, uh, see most are done. Um, got a few who need a little more time and I, think I still see the same response of someone needing help. So again, if you wanna reach out to either um, James or me or in private chat, um, we can move you over to a break room and maybe work with Giuliano if he's available. Um, to get you back on track. I'll leave that up for everyone's reference and just give it a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, okay. Um, so um, for those of you who may be um, joining a little bit late, um, getting back, no problem. Um, so uh, up until now, we've gone through this exercise that concluded uh, module three. Um, so this was an exercise that was left up for anyone who wanted to continue working during the break. And then we just went through this together very quickly. So we've defined a function here um, that counts the number of occurrences of the unique characters in a string that's passed to the function and just returns that as a dictionary. So um, we're gonna now move to module four. Um, of course, anyone who may be struggling with this, um, the slides will be available. Some code that more or less demonstrates this will all be um, In the very least, feel free to reach out to one of us um, about going through this if anything's unclear. Um, don't need to be able to do this to progress uh, through our last module. Um, there are a lot of things in here, certainly worth practicing that'll be helpful um, for the upcoming week. 